everybody. Really glad to be with you this week. I wanted to talk with you about a few things this week, a little bit of a smorgasbord of uh, issues going on, some local, some provincial. Um, first, uh, I wanted to say congratulations to the people of Toronto, thousands and thousands of you, and I know some Las Perlas uh, subscribers also phoned, emailed, faxed, uh, all of our city councillors. We showed up at City Hall on the on the 17th in mass numbers inside and outside City Hall to protest the uh, impending cuts to programs and services. And the people spoke and the councillors listened. Uh, the media can paint this as the mushy middle or the powerful middle councillors coming, uh, rising up and taking power, but really it was the power of the people that helped to stop some of the worst of the cuts to programs and services that were being suggested and put on the table. However, there are still many cuts on the table. The city is looking at uh, trying to cut over a thousand jobs, public sector, good paying jobs. Uh, we are still facing cuts to uh, transit service. We're still looking at a fare hike. We're still looking at um, uh, possible loss of the land transfer tax, although it looks like councillors are also uh, starting to stand up to Mayor Ford and his buddies, his right wing buddies on council. But our work is not done. It's really important for us to stay engaged on these issues, to understand that uh, we're going to have to repeat this fight, unfortunately, next year and the year after, as long as this mayor is in office. And so it's really important for us all to stay on top of what's happening at City Council and to keep in touch with our local councillor and the mayor to let him know that, um, that we do not want cuts. And in fact, what we need in this city are increases to our programs and services. Uh, at times when things are really hard, when corporations in this country are cutting hundreds of jobs right, left and center, we've just had an announcement from Sears Canada, 400 jobs lost, Enbridge, uh, or Direct Energy, sorry, 500 jobs lost. These are all in the GTA. Uh, this means that people are suffering. Uh, we're looking at a lockout of city workers by, uh, by city council. And so we're going to have people uh, probably locked out of their jobs at the city outside workers. So these are tough times. And in tough times, what we need our government to do is to step up and to increase supports to people, not take them away and make uh, people's lives even harder. This is especially true when we have a federal government uh, that is also cutting public service jobs, making it really difficult for people to access employment insurance, um, increasing uh, the cost that they're passing down to the provinces through their omnibus crime bills. Um, and so it's really important for us all to continue to be uh, vigilant and keeping on top of what's going on in the city, the province and the country. So let's keep doing that. One of the other victories that happened, I think, as a um, uh, kind of as a byproduct of the January 17th vote is that the planned uh, discussion at the executive committee on January 24th about the proposed sale of 645 TCHC homes has been delayed and the executive committee and the mayor has put off that vote until February 13th. Again, we need to be clear that although this is a victory in terms of making City Council think harder, uh, be more thorough, bring more information and study this, uh, this whole debacle more carefully, it's important that we understand that the sale of those homes is still on the table. And putting that off for three weeks um, is not going to bring the kind of sober second thought, the kind of really important ideas about how we can fund repairs and maintenance of TCHC. So let's make sure to be out there on February 13th. If you signed up to do a deputation on the 24th, I encourage you to contact the executive committee again and make sure they know that you want to speak again on, uh, I believe it's uh, Monday, February 13th. Um, and it's really important that we stand up for TCHC's tenants and all the residents of Toronto. Uh, again, we need to remember when city councils take actions to arbitrarily kick people out of their homes, uh, su uh, people with subsidized incomes, people who are considered to be not an important demographic of this city, that means that they uh, will take that power in other ways and they can very easily uh, bring down um, those kinds of uh, actions against other tenants who live in City of Toronto buildings, uh, other people uh, who are tenants in the city. So let's make sure to stay on top of that. 
I also wanted to talk with you a little bit, kind of switching now to a provincial uh, issue. That's the long gun registry. You'll remember that the, um, the federal government, uh, very unadvisedly, unfortunately, the Harper majority feels that they can push through um, omnibus crime bills, um, all sorts of uh, ill-considered legislation. They've got a majority. They can do it. Doesn't mean that it's right, of course. And they have, of course, killed the long gun registry. Now, those of us in the city, we might not um, think that the long gun registry has much to do with us. Uh, it's generally thought to be more of a rural issue and a far north issue, but um, it is an issue that affects women particularly. Domestic violence, deaths, due, uh, homicides due to use of long guns has really gone down in this province. It's the lowest it's been in 40 years, and we can take, uh, we can pin a lot of that. A lot of that is due to the uh, development and the establishment of shelters and safe spaces for women in this province, but some of that is also due to the fact that uh, men who use long guns <clears throat> to threaten their wives um, are made to register those guns, they're made to, uh, they are um, monitored in some way, uh, police can know when guns are, are existing in a home and when they're kept there by using the registry. In fact, police have used the registry a record number of times across the country in the, uh, since the Tories came to power. Um, so we know that long uh, the, the registration and uh, ultimately, uh, of course, uh, those of us working in the violence against women field uh, believe that the uh, abolishment of long guns and any kind of firearms, actually, there's no reason to own a gun uh, in most places in Canada. Anyways, um, we know that the long gun registry helps in the fight against violence against women. We know that it saves lives. It was established after the Montreal massacre in 1989. Um, although it's too late to save the long gun registry um, officially uh, in terms of the federal government, um, we can ask our province, uh, as Quebec has done, to insist on keeping the records that have been gathered over the years uh, through the Long Gun Registry. The federal government, in its vindictiveness and in its uh, clear, clear um, uh, lack of concern uh, about violence against women and about women's lives, has said that not only do they want to kill the Long Gun Registry, they are demanding that all provinces destroy any records that have been gathered over the years. This is absolutely ridiculous. It makes no sense whatsoever. Um, and we need the province to stand up to the federal government and to say to Prime Minister Harper uh, that they will not, that they will refuse uh, to destroy those records. Um, one way we can do this right now, and it's an important time to do this, it's back in the news, um, Quebec has said clearly that they will um, not support destroying records. Uh, the city of Mississauga has actually passed a, a council motion uh, saying that they um, also uh, do not support the destruction of those records and the city is going to encourage the Premier, Premier McGuinty, uh, to let the, the federal government know that Ontario will not destroy those records. We could use a motion like this at City Council. That's something to talk to your councillor about. Um, and we can also contact Premier McGuinty uh, right now ourselves and let him know that we expect the, the Premier to stand up for the women of Ontario, to stand up for the people of Ontario and to insist that we will keep those long gun uh, records, those registry records, that police will continue to have access to those records. So you can contact the Premier in a number of different ways. Email is probably not the best way because uh, the Premier uh, likely will not see emails uh, until long after you send them. But you can tweet if you're on Twitter and that's at Dalton underscore McGinty. You can find him on Facebook. He has a Facebook page at Dalton McGinty. You can phone him at 416-325-1941. And you can fax him at 416-325-9895. And we'll put those contact, that contact information up on the website for you. And it's really important to do that today. Let Dalton McGinty know he needs to hear from women in particular, but he also needs to hear from our male allies that uh, we care about the women in rural Ontario and the far north. We care about women's safety. We believe that the long gun registry works. We need to see those records kept. Uh, there is absolutely no good reason uh, to do that. We know that the federal government is, uh, in fact, violating the rights of women to equal protection under the law when they uh, take this kind of action, and we expect our premier to stand up for us. So let's make sure to do that this week and let him know how we feel about that. He needs to hear from the people of Ontario, no matter where we live. 
And finally, I just wanted to talk a little bit, uh, I'm going to bring it back to Toronto now, although the, there is a provincial aspect to this. Um, right now there's an inquest going on into a death of a young man named Junior Menon, I think uh, maybe 18 or 19 year old young man, who died uh, after being pursued by police and um, on a routine traffic stop. Uh, Junior was driving a car. Uh, the police uh, noticed an expired sticker. They stopped the car. For some reason, Junior um, became afraid, um, and witnesses have said uh, that were there said that he looked like he was very scared, and he bolted. It's never a good idea when the police stop you to run away. Uh, of course, it's best to uh, stay and uh, deal with whatever it is that they're bringing forward. But in this case, Junior ran away. He was pursued by police. He was tackled by police. The facts are coming out in an inquest that uh, happened, uh, is happening right now in Toronto. And uh, police sat on top of him. Uh, Junior was face down and, uh, and he died of asphyxiation. He was, his lungs were so compressed that he could not uh, breathe and he passed away. Um, this is, uh, is something that should not have happened. An expired license permit, uh, perhaps um, uh, probation. Uh, I think uh, Junior was facing a violation of probation, and because of uh, because of this, and because police used excessive force, in my opinion, um, and ended up uh, in this situation where they were sitting on him, and he died. Uh, and the official word to the from the SIU is that he died of asphyxiation, positional asphyxiation. But of course, if he hadn't been chased, being chased by police officers and tackled to the ground, uh, the asphyxiation could not have occurred. Uh, quickly, we had another situation last summer in the August where a man named Charlie McGilvery walking to a pizza shop with his mum. Uh, Charlie uh, had um, suffered from a uh, suffered from Charlie had experienced brain damage when he was youngster due to his a an accident and could not respond when people spoke to him. But he was gentle. He was helpful. He was a real pillar in his community. Um, again, another situation where police roaring up looking for someone who's apparently uh, matched Charlie's description in some way, uh, being large, I think, being a tall man. Uh, when they demanded that Charlie stop and talk to them, he couldn't. He didn't respond to anybody because of his brain injury. They tackled him. They swept his feet out from under him, knocked him to the ground again, sat on him, uh, jumped on his back. And again, Charlie, who had a pre-existing heart condition, died after that interchange, after that exchange and altercation. It's not even proper to call it an altercation. Charlie was a person like you and me just walking down the street who all of a sudden found himself with officers uh, sitting on top of him and tackling to the ground. These are unnecessary deaths. There are many more that have happened, way too many more. We need to talk to our police about how they're using force. This is not to blame. I'm sure officers feel terrible when these kinds of things happen. It's not to suggest that they uh, have the intention of causing these deaths at all. But their actions have incredible consequences. And police officers need uh, to be trained differently. They need, uh, we need to see some action. These deaths um, go unnoticed. They're not counted as homicides. Uh, we learn nothing from them. Hopefully from this inquest we'll learn something. But often what happens is police become exonerated, uh, they feel that they've done the right thing, and nothing changes. So we need to get in touch with the police and let them know that we are noticing. And even if they don't want to talk about this in detail, even if they don't, uh, even if the uh, special investigations unit does not find them responsible, we, the people of Toronto, expect better. We expect that people walking down the street or young people who are scared and uh, do the wrong thing when they run into a police officer do not end up dead as a result. It's not necessary. Um, and there are other ways to deal with people and we know that they are. We're not claiming to be experts on policing. I haven't been in that situation, but I know that many, many people have dealt with kids and with people like Charlie and they do that with grace, with patience and with talking and taking their time. You can call Bill Blair at 416-808-8000. You can call the chair of the police board, Alec Mukherjee, at 416-808-8080 and let them know what you think and let them know that you expect them to take action to ensure that nothing like that ever happens again. <laughs>